I've learned a couple of things already. The first thing is that I need to learn Dutch and learn it really fast. <laughs> because when I saw his presentation, it's like watching a foreign movie without subtitles, you know? So you see a, a juice mixer or something, then an NBA game, then Angela Merkel, and then someone saying, I'm happy. I can't put it together. Doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> and you it's an iPad today. Exactly. So it's, uh... I need to learn the language. And the second one was pretty scary because the titles and the, the slides were in English. And if you think about it, the US is a country where we sue everything for everyone, right? Just continue suing. And then the last, uh, I don't know if you pay attention to the last thing, the quote is actually from Benjamin Franklin. And he's a founding father of our country. And his quote is, Distrust and caution are the parents of security. So no wonder the country is so screwed up sometimes, you know, when it comes to all this. Uh... Anyway, thank you so much for the time, and thanks a lot for uh, on to it for giving us the opportunity here. I'll uh, quickly go through uh, Nutanix, and, uh, but it's not specifically about Nutanix, but in general, what's happening in Software Defined Data Center, and how it can allow you to converge, consolidate, and provide a wholesome security apparatus for your uh, infrastructure, OK? The title of the session is Bright and Cloudy. I'm going to start with the word cloud. I know everyone probably loves to hate the word cloud because everyone uses it for everything. I want you to put aside all the technology jargons aside and just focus on what the idea of cloud means to you in your life. All right, let's take a look. Imagine you go home and you switch on the light. What's the first thing that you are thinking? I don't know. I don't want to know. But let's say I can tell you what is the one thing you are not thinking. You're not thinking where the power is generated. right? You're not thinking whether there is enough water in that hydroelectric power plant. I know you are not thinking whether those people out there maintaining that power uh, electricity grid, are they paid? Did they get their sleep? You're not thinking that. You're definitely not thinking whether those transmission slides have enough uh, bandwidth. You don't think any of these things. You switch on the light, the light comes on, you do your work. A very simple, straightforward proposition. You use more light, you pay more, you stop using, you pay less, that's it. Right? Now, this is something people talk about a lot, uh, which is uh, utility model computing and all of that stuff, but it has never come to reality. But if you think about it, it's not just about electricity. Things have changed in your online experiences, too. This, are there anyone in the room who remembers what this is? A few of you, yeah? This used to be the portal to internet just 10 years ago. This is from 1999. You have entertainment, you have email, you have Usenet, maps, everything. Different, different page, cluttered entry bay. When Google changed to a simple model, you didn't lose anything. You still have every one of those things. But instead of you deciding where to go, it's simplified. It said, you know what? Tell me what you're looking for. I will find out. I will let you know where it is and how it is. Don't worry about the complexity. Don't worry about this. That takes a lot of complexity to build the simplicity that Google is delivering. Now. Let's look at your infrastructure, your organization. Let's say you're a bank. And the bank decided to build a new application. Or you're a healthcare provider. You decide to build a new application. As a CIO, what's the first thing you think about? Do you think about your user? How do I make my application better for my customer? What kind of design interface should I have? How do I make it better than my competition? Is that where you think? No, you start by thinking about these boxes. The storage, the server, the NAS, the firewalls, the load balancers, the security device, van accelerator, whatever the hell that is. I don't even know what it is now. And then you think about how do you connect them? What kind of zoning, what kind of masking, what kind of VLAN configuration? How do you do firewall, DMC, that, this, this? It's very similar to you go home, switch on the light, go outside, crank a generator, the light comes on, right? Your business is not about that. Your business is about something completely different. But you are forced to do all this. 
and we have gotten so used to it, we start thinking that's the way it should be. Just like Alta Vista, the way it should be. I need, if I need to email, I need to click email link. If I need to find people, I need to keep people link. It doesn't have to be. If you really are, let's say you go outside on a mountain and meditate for two weeks without internet access. I don't think I can do it, but let's assume we could do it. And then you come with a clear mind. And let's say you divide a line called a value line and say, you know what? Everything I should not have to do go below the line. Like in power, I don't think about power generation, I don't think about methods or transmissions and land permit, none of that stuff. I just think about what kind of light, where do I place them, when do I use them? Simple, right? Let's draw a parallel to your data center. You probably don't spend a lot of thinking about, time thinking about the hard drive vendor, the CPU vendors, and all that stuff, but you do spend still a lot of time thinking about the server, the storage, the network, the file system protocols, the iSCSI versus connectivity methodologies, the LUNs, the hypervisors. There are so much that you are thinking and spending a lot of your time that's above the line. And if you get that clarity of thought, if you were to go to mountains and meditate, you will know the best thing for your business is to bring it below the line. And if you do that, you'll have a lot more time to think about what you should do for your customers. How do I make it better for my customers? How do I make the user interface, the design, the monetization? How do I add value to my business? Right? Sounds good, but it is not possible because, like I said, you still have to do all the other stuff. This is where cloud enters. And there are two models when it comes to infrastructure today. One is public cloud, another one is your on-premise. I'm pretty sure a large number of people are actually on the on-premise side today. And a lot of you are actually probably thinking about public cloud, right? Now, let's, I'm not going to say one is better than the other. There are advantages. Let's look at the green ones. Those are the advantages. I'll just read out a few of them. A public cloud offers you fractional consumption. Buy what you need today. Don't worry about tomorrow. If you use more, I'll give you more. If you less, give it to me. I'll take it back. It's a very compelling financial argument for any business. Doesn't matter what business you are in, it makes sense. Manage and provision someone else's problem. One throw to choke. If something goes down, you call Microsoft, Azure, Amazon, wherever, right? They call them, it's their problem. Unlimited scalability, pretty much. You know, if you ask more, Amazon is not going to come out and say, sorry, man, I don't have any more. They are going to give you. And latest technology, they get, deliver better technologies all the time, but it comes at a cost. One of them is cost. Sometimes, depending on how you use it, it costs more. And second, it is sort of like Hotel California. You can check in, you cannot check out. The data goes in there, and then you don't know what happens to it, you're addicted to it, right? And flexibility, lack of flexibility, something. And privacy and security, thanks to NSA and others, it has become a big problem, particularly in Europe. These are all real problems. On the other hand, what you do today, on-premise data center, does make a lot of sense too. One, accountability and authority goes together. I remember a story in the US when Box, Box.com, Box.net, Box used to be hosted in Amazon for a long time, and there was a significant outage at Amazon, and Box customers were very unhappy. And they called Box and said, what's, what's happening? My files are gone, I can't access it. And uh, Box guys basically said, well, Amazon is down. Customers don't care. It's your application, it's your infrastructure, you figure it out how to make it work. So authority and business goes together. When it is your infrastructure, you know how to manage. But on the other hand, the downside, there are lots of problems. Step to growth. If you buy a storage system from a vendor today, you are stuck with it for the next three years. In that three years, there might be five other versions of uh, better products out there, just like the iPhone 5S. I bought a 5S like six months ago, now we have six. I feel bad. This is a problem. There are other problems too, scalability, all of that stuff. The ideal situation would be if you can bring them together. If you can bring all the stuff together, and that will become a really good infrastructure play for private cloud. Again, I'm not going to say that Nutanix does all of that stuff, but I'm saying, ideally, this would be a good setup pretty much for every business if you can figure out a hybrid model of cloud. And that's not an unusual thing if you think about 
if you have an iPhone, can you tell me where your iPhone ends and where the iCloud begins? If you have photo stream enabled, you can keep copying photos. At some point in time, Apple will move it to iCloud. You won't even know. Same thing with iTunes. This is happening in consumer space. Trust me, this is also happening in enterprise space, not in typical enterprise, but web scale enterprises. This is a Google data center. Google data center doesn't have any of those boxes you saw. They have a bunch of servers with software running inside them, running software-defined storage. What you are looking at is servers. What you are really seeing is servers, application servers, databases, storage systems, network, firewall, everything, except they're all software-defined. Just imagine the savings, imagine the security, imagine the operational simplicity that comes with it. One person, one training, one part replacement, one support organization can manage all of that. Yeah, Google can do that because that's their business. They write proprietary technology, proprietary people to do that. Can an enterprise do that? That's the idea that Nutanix started with. And to understand that, this is not something you have to you know, assume that may or may not happen. It's already happening. This was the first wave driven by all those companies and the second wave driven by VMware. VMware significantly changed the landscape by saying, you know, hardware doesn't matter. We will provide a shim over that where applications can run. Now, the third wave is starting where you got to figure out how to make the hardware, the applications, the web, uh, the, the hypervisors, and the cloud come together so you can put a shim around that. This is not an option. This is not a choice. This is happening. It is time to get on board. And what we have done is a way to deliver that for enterprise customers. This is your enterprise architecture today. You have three tiers, servers, network storage. What we have done is to blow away all that complexity, bring the compute and storage together, and bind them together using a Google-type file system that allows you to run compute and storage together in a single appliance. Your applications runs where the storage is running, which means you have one domain to manage and secure. But it also provides all the features that you're looking for, the NFS, the SIFs, the snapshot, the replication, deduplication, compression, everything. Purely software-defined. Runs on commoditized Intel servers. Most of the engineers for Nutanix came from Google, so the basic methodology that Google does in terms of scale-out can be found in Nutanix as well. That's what you've done. Sort of like what iPhone did for your applications, right? You had a calculator, you had a mobile phone, you had a camera. Apple basically softwareized all of that. You have a software-defined calculator, you have a software-defined phone and a software-defined camera in your iPhone now. I would argue that every one of them got better because it is software-defined. That's what Nutanix did in the first attempt. The next phase of Nutanix will be, how do we bind it and make the seamless transition for customers who want to go to public cloud or private cloud? So bridge the gap between where your infrastructure is today and where the data will go tomorrow. We are actively working on it. The next month, we'll be announcing our Cloud Connect with Amazon. Very soon after that, we'll have Google and Azure platform coming out as well. So you can make a decision which type of data should reside locally, which one should go out. This is an actual photo of a data center that Nutanix powers. More than 300 blocks running their entire infrastructure started with actually three blocks in the beginning, and then multiple phases, multiple projects came together, non-disruptively, seamlessly, linearly scaled to almost six petabytes of data over a period of less than nine months. This looks very similar to the Google data center because it is. But at the same time, nothing proprietary, no changes for the application, no real change for management infrastructure. We deliver this for a lot of use cases, primarily for VDI. We do that for branch offices and all business critical applications like your Exchange, SQL Server, SharePoint, and all of that stuff. Ideally, the Nutanix is about two different left brain and the right brain. Solving only the left brain is not a good idea. Because, you know, Apple, fantastic stuff, but the reason why people use that is the usability, the simplicity, the design, the beauty. We have put a lot of effort to make sure 
that the same level of beauty and simplicity can be brought into enterprise infrastructure as well. If you look at Nutanix Prism, which is our management tool, it does few things. It does management, visualization, orchestration, provisioning. All of these things are done so that you can manage them from an iPad. Your entire infrastructure can be done from an iPad. I'll give you an example. Those 300 servers you saw there, imagine there is a VMware hypervisor upgrade, 5 to 5.5. Nutanix upgrade from 3 to 4. Let's say that is 300 servers. One upgrade from each version, that's almost 600 upgrade instances you have to do. If you really didn't think about usability, now you have to go upgrade 600 of them and then write scripts. Nutanix, we have patented a scheme called one-click upgrade. You just click onto one button, it'll go to Amazon, download the latest version of software, upgrade all 600 of them non-disruptively, and text you saying upgrade done. If something fails, it'll roll back. This is important. When you think about all this stuff being out there, management is a big problem, and we have done a pretty good job, and there's a long way to go, but it is an interesting start on how what Apple did for consumer space we can bring for enterprise customers. This is a, a view of it. We don't have enough time to do any of this stuff, but we'll be available. I have uh, our uh, country manager, the managing director for uh, 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 this part of the world, uh, Patrick, here as well. And between us, we'll be able to help you with any questions. And onto it, have a lot of uh, Nutanix experts as well, and they will be available throughout the day to answer any questions you may have. Well-established customers, a lot of customers out there. If you have any questions about any of this stuff in general, about cloud or security or software defense storage future, we would be happy to have that conversation with you. Kept on time? Yeah? Sudesh, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. <laughs>